Welcome to the Idea Climbing Podcast. Today, we're discussing how to use applied improvisation in the business world. My guest is Mike Weaver. Mike has been an actor in improv theater since 2003 and a member of the Applied Improvisation Network since 2007. Topics include how improv teaches you to be present and live in the moment, the difference between traditional improv and applied improv for business, how improv applies to networking in the business world, and more golden nuggets of advice. I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the Idea Climbing Podcast. Today, we're talking about applied improv for business with Mike Weaver, author, speaker, leadership coach. He's been practicing improv for just over 20 years now. I'm really excited about this because I people that know me know I love improv. Thank you for being here, Mike. I appreciate you making the time. Oh, man, it's my pleasure. I'm, I'm so happy to be here and I'm grateful for the conversation. Yeah. And I always love to hear an origin story when it comes to improv, like really using it, not just dabbling, but using it like you do, not only as part of a troupe, but for business. What's this? How did you discover improv? Was it childhood? Was it somewhere in your adult life? Well, I think for me, it was, uh, well, I not think I know for me. So what happened was in the uh, in late 2003, I was uh, taking my family with a little boy to ice cream, get some ice cream at a local ice cream parlor. And on the on the wall, as you walked in, they had these like flyers from different you know people offering workshops. And I saw this improv workshop for professionals, uh, improve your public speaking, you know, conversation and, and just leadership and so on. I'm like, well, that all applies to me. Um, I don't know how to do improv. I think I'll take a class. And so I went down. It was down in I live in Columbus, Ohio. I was at a theater and below a theater and some studios below a theater taught by an actress from New York city. Um, and I, that first improv class, I was hooked. I mean, literally the first five minutes, yeah. um, I realized in that moment I've been doing this all my life, but I didn't have a name for it. So when you think about childhood, you mentioned that, yeah, I guess I didn't, I couldn't call it improv then, but I was doing that. And I always oh, just part, part of who I am. And so when I got there, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I have permission now to be me and to co-create and have fun and make something meaningful uh, in a creative way with other people that we're all in this together. It's a, it was a beautiful experience. And so I took that first class and it was a series of eight classes. And then at some point she said, hey, I'm offering a second level. I'm like, I'm in, you know, and I just <laughs> kept taking class after class after class after class. And I just never stopped for years. Uh, and then I still take classes. I mean, it's, it's, there's always something to learn, but that 2003, that, that year at that ice cream place was, that was my turning point for improv. That's, that's awesome. I think a lot of improv starts with, even these days still, at least in Chicago, it still starts with a flyer, even with social media, there's mm -hmm. still flyers for it. Yeah. So and really, you know, and that's interesting. I mean, the flyer, what it did was it created curiosity. It was just curious and me and my going, what is this? And that's a set that is it. And now I think about it, that is improv. It's just like yeah. this sense of curiosity and openness of like, there's possibility here. Let's explore it. Let's see where we go with it and see what happens. And that's, that was so cool. And I'd love to, we'll, we'll get into applied improv for business in a minute. Yeah. What I'd love to talk about first is what, one of two things, answer either or, or both. What, as far as improv in general, what are the common misconceptions or what don't the, what doesn't the general public know about improv? So I think improv is styled a lot of times. They put improv comedy after it, comedy. Mm -hmm. And improv can be funny, but improv doesn't have to be funny. I mean, I've seen dramatic improv. I've seen improv that's brought me to tears. And there wasn't anything funny about it. Um, it was really honest. And that honesty was what got me. And so I think one of the misconceptions is, is always about always just about being funny or it's about stand up comedy and being clever on mm -hmm. stage. And that's not it at all. Really, a com anything that's funny or dramatic is the fruit of what is actually happening on stage. That's the this that's the misconception. We kind of just we lump it into a comedic thing. But that is not the case. Um, and, and people don't have to be witty. Yeah. or having special skills 
and that's the other misconceptions. Well, I can't do improv because you know I'm not I'm not in theater or I've I've not taken acting classes. Well, I didn't either, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's just about showing up and being present. And those those that skills that's a human skill. That's not necessarily a skill that you know professionals have. Um, then what happens is you just start sharpening that skill as you learn. But everybody's got that skill to listen, be present, to focus. Yeah, I'd love to dive a little deeper into the human skills part of it because that's something I know. When I took improv, I never planned to be on Saturday Night Live. It wasn't about hitting the main stage. It was about how do I use this in my business life. Yep. Could you explain a few more human skills that you're particularly fond of with improv? Yeah, I mean, I think, so really, to me, what I love about improv and the improv that our troupe does, um, it is it is all about just working at being really present in the moment and not thinking too far ahead and not really even thinking ahead of what the next moment's going to be because we don't know what the next moment's going to be, right? Mm-hmm. So we just we just know what we have right now. And what we have right now, say it's two people on stage. We have two people on stage having a conversation. One line, one line, one moment, one moment. And you're sharing the space. And what I've learned is that is a skill that is helpful in for, for any business conversation. I mean, certainly we go in sometimes business conversations with an agenda or a thought of like how we want this to go. And that's uh-huh. all fine and good. We just can't get, we can't. We just can't hold on to it tightly because within that kind of sense of like having a, a framework of what we want to have happen, we hope to have happen. There's a lot of things that are going to happen that if we're so caught into our agendas, we're going to miss some things. And so that skill of just being really present with the person you're with, giving them the gift of an openness and listening to them and really hearing what they're saying. I mean, talk about like if it's an entrepreneur trying to find a client, what yeah. the client receives is this person who is really super present. And that's like that is that's not always that doesn't always happen in our world to have somebody really present with each other. And that can that's a gift. And so that's a that's a big one for me. Um, just helping people learn that skill, being present and listening deeply. I love that, especially because it's gonna tie into what we're gonna talk about with applied yeah. improv. What ways can you be present? Unpack that a little bit more. Uh, so, I mean, it's making eye contact with the person, you know, not staring, you know, not this weird, like, <laughs> this, this is just odd, you know, I'm creating an awkward, awkward space, you know, we're not doing that. But it's more just like, you can tell when somebody's there. And you can tell, and it's, it's a subtle thing where you can tell somebody's fully there, their energy is in it. And sometimes it's leaning in a little bit, just a little bit sometimes, or eye contact or body language. But even if the body language is there, sometimes if we're in our head, in a conversation, people know. Our face might be saying, oh, we're here. But there's like this energy that leaves our face a little bit. And we can tell the other person can say, oh, they're thinking about something. It's subtle. And we, we think we can get away with it. But nine times out of ten, we can't. That's been my experience. That's been my my experience. So, um, you know, so th- those types of things, body language, making eye contact, really focusing on what somebody's saying. Um, and sometimes what I do, I tell people, and I do for myself, is sometimes I'll tap my foot on the ground because my f- I'm just reminding myself I'm present right here. Mm-hmm. Like it, it just is a friendly reminder. It's real subtle for me. To say, okay, this is where I need to be right here. Put my put my head and my body where my feet are. And let me just focus right here. Those type of things really help me to be present. And anybody could do that. Anybody could do that. Well, since we're going down the road, let's get into a little bit more into the applied improv. Could you explain yeah. that? Because it's I know applied improv, there's a term for it because it's different than just traditional improv. Yeah, so so in the applied. There's a group called the Applied Improv Network. It's a global network of professionals from various um, disciplines and professions, uh, literally around the world, uh, who have taken what we learn from improv theater, uh, the skills, the mindset, the ways of being, the tight way to create, and taking those things that is normally left on stage or in a classroom. 
and say, what do we, how can we apply that to business or teaching or in various and sundry different uh, areas of life? Mm-hmm. Um, and so the applied improv piece is just simply saying to say, well, how does that improv improviser on stage approach a problem and solve a problem? How does applied imp- how does an improviser on stage approach creating something in the moment in a cooperative way, in a collaborative way? Okay, so that if that's improv, if improvisers can do that on stage, then what can we learn about how do we collaborate with colleagues? How do we co-create with colleagues? Mm-hmm. How do we have the right mindset of being present and listening? How do we um, solve a problem improv- in- with improv that we're dealing with in everyday life? And who do we need on that problem? So that's that's where it that's where it takes it takes it from the stage into the classroom or the business office or wherever it is. Yeah. Can you talk more about collaboration? I think that's a big part for make your scene partner look good to you can't yeah. hold on to something for too long. In the business world, I mean, especially if you're talking entrepreneur, solopreneur, people that aren't in big companies, yeah. collaboration is part of everyday life, whether you label it as that or not. What are some ways that improv helps collaboration? Boy, that I think you you mentioned it, you know, make your scene partner look good. Uh, just that, for me, that was a big skill for me. I mean, um, when I first learned improv, this is one of the things that I learned, like make the other person look good. And the way we do that is by hearing what they said and then taking what they said, even if it's a kernel of what they said Mm -hmm. and taking that and moving it forward. Just one more step. Because all of a sudden, if somebody feels like they've, they've been heard and understood at some level, even if we completely disagree in a collaborative environment, we think that's the worst idea ever. But I always say the, what's the challenge? The challenge is like, is there a small thing you can pull out even though that bad idea that you like? Is there something in there? And now take that little thing, even if it's a little, and then add to it and add your own piece to it. And then eventually you start adding things together and you start creating something. And so that's the collaborative piece, making somebody else look good by listening to them, honoring what they have to say, even though we might disagree with it, and then add our own piece to it. That And that in that collaborative way, I mean, lots of mm-hmm. things are created in that way, uh, in that openness. How do you add your own piece to it without yeah. taking over the conversation? Well, it's it's by saying, by recognizing in humility, I don't have all the answers, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to add my piece to it, but I'm going to let somebody else add their piece to it, to to what I just had to say. I mean, if I go into it saying, I'm going to listen, they're going to start the conversation, but I really know how to what this idea is supposed to be, then I'm going to have that I had the last word and then nobody's going to add to that. But if I go in thinking, oh, we're all we're together in this, there's an attitude thing. We're here co-creating this, whatever this is, a product, uh, an idea about something. So let's all let's hear from everybody here. And so let's all add our piece to it and let's see what we can create together. But that's an attitude thing. And it's a it's a heart thing and an openness to Recognizing other people have wisdom and experience that I don't have, yeah. that they can add to that. And so, yeah, that's right. That's what I'd say. What are some ways that that's the conversation once you're into it, as far as getting into a conversation and starting yeah. a successful one? Can you talk about improv in the networking world? Yeah, improv in the networking world, you know, it's, you know, it, it is that when we're meeting somebody new, um, uh, let me give you. Let me give you. A, it's not a networking thing, but it does apply to networking. Let me okay. give you a story. Okay, this is this this will illustrate. So when I first met my wife, it was our first date. I was nervous. I hadn't dated for a long time, and it was our. You know, I met her online, and so on and so forth. It was our first public meeting. I'm like, oh man, what do I do about this? And like, I feel like, and I the focus was going to be on me. Like, how am I doing? How am I performing? Does she like me? And all these questions, which are normal questions for human beings. Mm -hmm. And what I did was I thought, I'm going to shift it around. I know improv. I'm like, because I've been doing improv for a while then. I'm like, okay, what if I make this an improv conversation? And I don't know how it's going to turn out. But my job, she doesn't know this, but I know this, right? Mm Because I didn't tell you this. I went into this thinking my attitude was, 
This is an improvised conversation, which it really is because we don't have a script. Mm -hmm. And my job is to listen and make her look good. And that's all I'm going to do through this entire conversation. And so what I did was I showed up, I sat down with her, I asked her a question. And I asked her another question. And I, I let her talk about her and let her kind of shine. And then I would add my own pieces, but I didn't want to steal a conversation. Like we're oh. co-creating something here, right? And we're creating a moment together. And I just brought her out and eventually it got to me. But I wanted to first start with her. And we're married now 15 years to this, you know, this very day. And that first date started that process. But what I learned from that moment is, and this applies, this is why I say this, it applies to networking because we meet these people that we might not know. And we we automatically think, I need to get my point across. I need to look good. They need to do business with me and so on and so forth. Ah, that's, that's, that's the wrong approach. What if we just went into it saying, tell me about yourself. What about you? And learn about that person and then get back to yourself naturally and let raise the other person up. Boy, that's a gift to give somebody. And they feel like, wow, they, that person really knows me. They heard me. I want to do business with that person because all of a sudden my likability in their mind is increasing because I've made them feel better about themselves potentially. Right. Yeah. I think that's where it applies for networking in that way. Can you talk about more? I love listening or I, the word I'm going to use for what you just said is active listening. So many people yeah. think of it as a passive thing. And what am I going to, they're not even doing it. They're just like, what am I going to say next? Yes. Can you talk about active listening in the improv bit slash business world? It is. Uh, Sometimes it's repeating like this. Yeah, I would say an active listening would say, so here's what I tell you about improv and in the business world, right? Kind of using the exact same phrase that they just said, shared. Oh my gosh, they they heard their language. They heard their their sentence or their portion of their sentence. Yeah, yes, I can talk about improv in the business world. And here's how I think it applies. Um, that that type of thing. That's the active listening piece. You mm -hmm. know, it's... it's um, and it's also uh, leaning in and being, you know. Sometimes I, I sometimes if I'm in a uh, and I'm in a um, networking conversation, it's about body language too, and letting myself be neutral if I'm if I'm standing in that sense that let me instead of having a hand like this, or but what if I just was like comfortable in my skin mm -hmm. and let my arms just be to my side. I could put my hand on my hip or I can lean on something. But if I'm communicating a confidence that I'm okay in this present moment, I'm okay. I feel okay. I'm good. Now I'm poised to be actively listening because my body is also communicating. I'm open to listening as well, right? Because I'm not worried about how I'm being, where am I putting my hands, how am I, how am I standing? And no, 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 no. I'm just really present. And then that active listening comes as a natural response. That's what I've learned. I think it, with what you just said, a segue into responding instead of reacting. Yeah. And throwing an elevator pitch out or whatever it might be. Could you talk a little bit just about that, the the power of really responding instead of reacting in a conversation? Oh, totally. So so responding, uh, reacting is, is listing on a surface level. And I got to, I got to, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But responding is thinking about what the person just said. And then responding with honesty. How did that? How did that affect me? What they said it doesn't have to be deep and like, oh, and like it made us cry or that. It could do that in in a conversation, like an improv in an improv world. We will respond on stage uh, to each other. Um, one person says something, and it's meant to do something to us. It's meant to have an affect in mm -hmm. our hearts or our minds. Something's going to spur just by what they said. And if I'm really listening, and then it's still now it's like going, let me respond honestly. Let me, uh, we're, we're in a workshop this weekend by Dave Rosowski. And I guess Dave Rosowski, who I've not met, but I've read some of his stuff. And yeah. he talks about um, responding, any response, dip it into your heart first, and then respond with that. Mm. That's an improv, that's improv on stage, right? Because then, the, then the response becomes really honest. I dip it into my heart first, whatever, whatever I'm, however, however that affected me, 
and here's what I want to say. Boy, that can be really honest in a conversation too, just in a business conversation. You don't have to be touchy feely. You're not talking about that. It's just mm -hmm. being thoughtful. Like, I really am responding honestly to this person about what this is, what's going on here in this situation. So if I hear you right, it's actually let, letting a big part of it is letting them know that you hear them, not letting them know what you do. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You'll eventually get to what you do. Eventually. It'll, it'll come out. But let it come out naturally. Let it come out in the flow of the conversation. Um, and that, and if the person never asks, maybe that's the best person to work with, right? Because then um, it's about, yeah. then they're all about themselves. And you'll know it. That's what I've experienced in networking conversations. There are people I love to do business with. There's people I'm like, no, they're just about themselves. Mm -hmm. And they they don't care about me. And uh, okay, that's fine. At least I know that now. I'm not trying to be judgmental, blah, blah, blah. I mean, we all have our days. But it, sh it starts to show up. So it will come back to us. It will come back. We've covered a lot of ground in a short period of time. You're going to tell the people watching, listening, they're they're interested, they're engaged, like, okay, I get it. There's this improv thing. There's applied improv. It's really great yeah. for business also. If you were to tell them to adopt one thing just to get started, just one thing above all, whether you want to reinforce something you said or mention something entirely different, what would you say? Just adopt this and your business say, life will get better. Yeah. Focus on the person you're with. And I would say, and uh, make them look good. If if a person just does two things, focus on who you're with and make them look good, that's a winning strategy for a networking conversation or any business conversation. Those two things. And there's a lot more you can go with it, but that start there, start there. This has been awesome. If someone wants to find you online, what's the, where's the best place to go? Yeah, I'd say go to unstuckcoaching.co, uh, mm -hmm. unstuckcoaching.co. As a coach, I use I, I use applied improv as a coach, you know, whether it be sometimes techniques, uh, mindset, but certainly every coaching conversation, every coaching session is an improvised conversation. And I take that really seriously and to try to be really present with my clients. So unstuckcoaching.co. Thanks again, Mike. I appreciate it. Yay. Thank you. It was a pleasure. I appreciate that. And scene. <laughs> <laughs>